Welcome back to Montana Garage. Thanks for coming back for part two of the 57 Chevy sedan delivery walk around. Uh, if you watched part one, which I'll link up here somewhere if you didn't, uh, you know we did a little bit of uh, talking about the 57 and went for a little burn and it didn't go so well. Uh, so I said I was gonna try to get that figured out and in part two hopefully go for a drive. Well, I did try to get it figured out. Uh, one problem we have with going for a drive is it is October 11th, I believe. And this is what we're dealing with out here at Mon in Montana today. We got our first dose of winter. Hopefully it's short lived and it's only gonna stick around for a couple days. Uh, so it's not very conducive to hot rod driving right now. Uh, and the other problem is I didn't really get it figured out. Uh, I've done some tinkering, I've done some troubleshooting, and I have a couple theories. Uh, my first couple theories didn't work, or weren't correct, or I figured they weren't right, but I did a couple little things just to try to make it, to kind of check off some boxes to make sure. And now I have another idea, and I'm kind of waiting on some parts. So I was going to throw some of that troubleshooting footage in here, but I have enough to make another video. So uh, if you stick around, or if you come back later, there should be maybe a part three uh, it'll show some troubleshooting, trying to figure out why the mechanical injection was or is, because I still don't have it figured out, causing me trouble. Uh, hopefully I'll get it figured out, and then maybe in that video, if winter goes away, we'll get to go for that drive. Be sure to come on back to the channel there for part three. Uh, maybe hit the little bell and the subscribe button so you don't miss that. As I record this, I think I'm four subscribers away from 5,000, so I never ever thought I'd get there. Maybe I still won't, but... Uh, Four of you out there that haven't subscribed, maybe uh, hit the little button, help a guy out so I can get to 5,000. Uh, the rest of this video is gonna just be more of the, of the walk around of the car, showing you a few more details, talking about kind of future plans. Um, so enjoy that. Uh, make sure you hit the like button, comment. If you got any questions, especially, uh, you got any spe specific questions about the car, put them in a comment down below. I always try to answer almost every comment. I try to answer all of them. I think one video I got behind and never got caught back up to those, but. If I missed your comment ever, I apologize. I always try to answer all of them. Uh, so let me know if you got any questions. If you want stickers, we'll do the same thing. Give me a follow over on Instagram. Send me an instant message or a message over there with your address. And while supplies last, I'm running out. Uh, I'll try to get stickers out till they're gone. I'll get more coming in eventually and we'll find out some other ways to give them away. But uh, we got a few more to give away with this video. So hit me up. Uh, thanks for watching and enjoy the video. Sounds like the chainsaw crew next door is done. So uh, maybe you can hear me better. Let's talk about the mechanical fuel injection. I know a lot of you guys probably know about it or more about it than I do, but there's probably a few guys out there that don't know really anything about the mechanical injection. I know I didn't know about it. I mean, I kind of was around it because my uncle and he used, to, he used to joke with me about it saying, oh, don't get too close. You'll get sucked into the stacks or, you know, this thing's gonna have so much power that my little small block, he'll just gonna use that for a starter motor on this. And he used to joke around with me like that. But uh, that's where, I don't know if you saw that video I made, uh, solo B-roll challenge, strange things are happening. I kind of make it look like the camera gets sucked through the engine. So that's where that came from is because Gordy used to say, don't get too close to, you know, it'll, you'll get sucked in or I can't, I can't drive near small children because they get sucked into my engine, uh, stuff like that. So he was a funny guy. Anyways, so the mechanical injection, it's kind of obviously old school technology. A lot of people are still using it, obviously it's a, it's a good way to go fast. Uh, it's designed for idle and wide open throttle. So there's not a lot of, there's not like an accelerator pump or things like that. So when you're kind of off idle driving, it always kind of wants to try to stumble. So if you want to just idle and then give her the onion, it works pretty good. So obviously it's kind of drag racing application. Uh, it's not only, it's kind of racing application, I guess. Sprint cars are big for using these things. Um, I'm sure there's other things too, but uh, so, in my application, it's because we're trying to drag race, or that's what Gordy was trying to do. He was more of a street racer type dude back in the day. You know, he'd go up on 8th Street there in Rapid City, South Dakota, and race. Um, that's what I did too. But 
anyways, that's what he was building it for. Um, so back to, so that's why he had mechanical injection. He's, he wanted to go fast and that's kind of how you did it back then. There was no turbos and all that crap. So the mechanical injection works off of, this is the fuel pump and it's ran by the crank. So the crank turns and turns this pulley and I think it turns half the speed of the crankshaft. So the faster the engine turns, the faster the fuel pump turns, the more fuel it gives the engine. So as the, the fuel pump turns, it starts, you know, it feeds fuel through this line and into this little block in the center there. Know where I can show you the best, right down there. That's called the metering block. And as you operate the throttle, there's a little valve in there that opens and closes. And then that's what, you know, lets the fuel go to each different injector. So this little hose here, there's eight of those, they come off the metering block. So as you give it more gas, the engine speeds up, it gives it more gas, basically. Uh, so the way you can kind of tune it is any gas that the engine doesn't need, this is called the primary bypass valve. So inside of this little guy, uh, there's a spring and a jet. And so this jet allows how much, this is coming off of the fuel pump as well. So there's a re the jet is a restriction in there. And as the fuel pump's turning and sending all this fuel, this is what allows more or less fuel to go back to the tank. So whatever fuel doesn't go back to the tank has to go to the engine. Uh, so that's how you do a little bit of tuning. You adjust that jet in there or change the jet. It's kind of backwards for the carburetor guys because if you need to lean it out, lean if, you, if you're getting, if you're running too rich and you need to lean the motor out, you got to put a bigger jet in there because then what that does, it allows more fuel back to the tank and less to the engine. So it's kind of backwards, but that's kind of the main tuning thing. Here's also a spring inside of this. this is called the secondary bypass and I haven't messed with that one as much. I know you can do a little tuning with that too. So it's just altitude and uh, barometric pressure, you know, all that stuff affects how much fuel you need. So, I mean, I kind of have it to where I just, you know, I know I have the jet in there that I know works pretty good at home. It runs better, sometimes worse, sometimes depending on the weather conditions or whatever. But that's what that book I was showing you earlier, all those formulas, you can figure out based on where you're at and the weather conditions, you know, how you need to run it. So there's a lot of math involved and that's maybe not my strong point, but we'll figure it out when we get to actually race and we'll have to, you know, learn a little bit more about that stuff so we can try to, you know, get her running where she needs to run. So the engine itself, is a 427 big block Chevrolet. Uh, the paperwork says it's an L88, and I guess maybe those are kind of rare. A lot of things, a lot of times people say they have an L88 and they don't know. I don't know if it really is an L88, but that's what, you know, Gordy has written down in his paperwork. I haven't, you know, crunched the numbers, but supposedly it's an L88, and it also has, and those came in Corvettes of the late 60s, I think. Uh, it has aluminum heads, factory aluminum heads, uh, these are they're called like the winter's snowflake heads or something like that uh, i think they're pretty sought after too now I'm, I'm sure modern day heads are probably better but these were pretty good back in the day uh, so that's what we got for the engine and it's all freshly rebuilt you know i mean fret when i say fresh i mean you know freshly rebuilt back in the 90s but hasn't hardly been ran i don't know all the specifics about what's inside uh, but i remember gordy talking about pink rods i don't know if that's a uh brand name or but it's all i know it's all forged stuff it's got a pete jackson gear drive on the front uh, i got some paperwork for that um yeah i don't know he used to tell me it was going to make 600 horsepower i don't know if that's an accurate number i've of course never had it dynoed i should get it running right one of these days and head up to my brother-in-law's he actually has a dyno so maybe we'll do that one of these days but uh that's what gordy used to tell me um can't remember if i talked about this but the biggest reason i can't drive it too much right now is the radiator it leaks and it just gets too hot. So I need a new radiator. And uh, obviously it's a little, I got four hoses coming off the injection intake instead of just one central hose. So, you know, Gordy just made this back in the day. It's leaking a little bit around there. It leaks in a few different spots. So I need to address that. That's the biggest reason I haven't been uh, driving it. So I'd like to find another radiator, just a regular stock style radiator that fits in here so I don't have to, you know, reinvent the whole world. But I want to make sure that's going to 
keep it cool enough. I might need to do something a little different. You know, we got an electric fan. We got a pusher and a puller, I guess. One on the front, one on the back. Um, anyways, whatever what it's got going on right now doesn't keep it cool enough. So we got to we got to address that someday soon. We got disc brakes, uh, actually front and rear disc brakes all the way around. Just manual. I don't have any kind of power booster. Uh, no room for that, obviously. Anyways, uh, let's see what else we got. A little bit of custom artwork on the dash, special delivery. And then this is from Gordy. He's had that in there back from forever, so I left it in there. Unless you just took a bath and are completely nude, do not touch. So, you know, make sure you follow the rules if you come over. Uh, inside, uh, pretty bare bones on the interior, you know, no door panels. Inside, back here, it's been tubbed, so uh, it's all just, you know, basically bare aluminum. Got the battery back in the corner back there. I'll crawl through and open that up so we can pull the panel there and look at the stuff back there. Got a roll bar, uh, fire extinguisher. I did put the uh, five point harnesses in it because I was planning on racing. Of course, I've had those for a couple years and you got to replace them every few years. So I'd have to look, but I'm sure they're expired. Well, two years from date punched, June of uh, 17, so yep. These are brand new, never been in the sunlight, but I'll have to replace them before I go racing. Um, obviously they're good enough if I'm gonna be driving around or whatever, but uh, we got a tilt wheel, four speed. It's actually got a Ford top loader. Gordy thought those were tougher. So we got a Chevy big block, Ford top loader, Ford nine inch out back. Um, got the little red velvet here on the on the dash. It's kind of, you know, maybe a little out of style for today's day, today's day and age, but uh, it was cool back then. and. I'll probably just leave it. Maybe someday I'll replace it with just some black. Uh, got a couple gauges on the dash, and you can see we got fuel pressure outside because you don't want to run that fuel in here. And then our old school mechanical tack. So there's no uh, no wiring on that bad boy. It's just a cable driven right off the distributor, so it's a mechanical tack drive. So that's kind of cool. I need to get a better light in there because I can't see it at night. We got our big block king sticker from. Uh, Jorney over there on Instagram, Big Block Kings, check him out. And we got some, uh, we got some meats under here. And coilovers, wheelie bars. Got another fuel cell. I don't have that actually plumbed in right now. I'm only running off that little tank in the front. Um, but the plan is, so I can, once I start driving a little more, is, you know, to somehow carry fuel back there and then either just have a pump to transfer it up here or I got to change some stuff around in the fuel system so um, that we can work it differently. But one way or another, I need to get more fuel because I can only go a few miles on that little thing. Originally, this was going to be red. Candy apple red. You can see now he's got the firewall and the door jams painted white. So we switched at some point from red to white. And uh, so that's probably what I'll do. Like I said before, I'm so used to looking at it like this. I mean, it's looked like this forever, basically. I mean, obviously he's done some work to the rear end, to the rear wheel wells, and but it's always been primer gray. And uh, these fenders are obviously from something else. I don't know what the deal is with those, but uh, they never were ever really on there until right at the end. But uh, it's always looked like this. And it's always been, you know, kind of rough looking or whatnot. And I'm fine with it, to be honest with you. Uh, so I got a lot of mechanical stuff to do, or not a lot, but a little bit of mechanical stuff to do. And then uh, if I ever get around to it, I means Gordy was gonna go white, I think I'll go white too, but I might do like a, you know, rough, like white patina, sand it, sand through to the primer and spots and, you know, kind of make it look rough and mean. It's kind of, that's kind of my intentions if I ever get around to that. Um, we'll see if it ever happens. So immediate plans. Um, I made this list last year, probably about this time because drag racing was ending and I was like, darn it, I'm gonna go racing next year. Well, I didn't do that. Uh, so I got this list and I only crossed one thing off all year. Um, and there's probably more things I gotta do, but this is kind of the stuff I gotta do to get it on the track. So, you know, you gotta pass tech or whatever, right? So, uh, well, I gotta replace the radiator. That's not really for passing tech. That's for just cause it needs done. Plumb the rear fuel cell, same thing, that's not really, I can run it like this, you know, 
for racing without doing that. Uh, change seat mount. So the seats are on a swivel setup. And it's kind of cool for getting in and out because we got this darn roll bar. But they swivel. So you can get in there and swivel and then I don't have it in there, but this thing tightens down and locks it in place. Uh, but then, so basically, there's one bolt that goes through this little hole right here to tighten up a collar on a shaft and that's what holds the seat in place. Well, NHRI says your seat's got to be held down by four bolts. And there is four bolts holding that plate down, uh, but technically I don't think that would qualify. So I need to replace or, you know, redo how the seats are mounted. And then I'll also need, need a little bar back here so your seat can't tip backwards. So it means I'm not against the roll bar back there. I got to have a little bar that goes in there so the seat can't uh, go backwards. So got to do those two things. They're on the list. Add door handles. So I don't know if you noticed this or not, but we got, uh, we got no door handles. He'd be smooth. He left the locks in for whatever reason, but no door handles. So his theory was uh, there was going to be a little button right down here, and then the solenoids and the door poppers. He had he had that stuff in there. I don't think he had the buttons. He actually, yeah, he was even going to do from the inside. He had these off, and he had a whole he had a button down here. He was going to have a button and a popper for opening it from inside and outside, but. Uh, drag racing, you gotta have some handles so if you crash, they can get in there. So, the easy thing for me to do would be to put stock handles back on here. But I think I'm gonna try to do those can dig it things. So I'm just so used to seeing it smooth. So, I gotta do that if I'm ever gonna get it on the track. Mount the rear tires. So, these tires, although they look brand new, and they are brand new, same with the back ones. I mean, the back ones have been spun around a time or two but they're from the 70s um they've always been inside but they're pretty hard i don't see any big dry rotten areas on them or nothing but uh they need replaced i actually have i bought new hoosiers for the rear got them over here in the pile i just i've had them for about a year or so never well yeah more than a year probably haven't put them on and i bought new Tires for the front, but I bought a little bit taller size because my headers were dragging, but they were too tall. And then the tire was hitting my oil filters and rubbing on the fender. So I got to mount those rear tires and get rid of those front tires and get some new front tires. Uh, we need a grill and a grill bar. Seat brace, I talked about that. And then I think the fuel tank has to have some sort of skid plate around it. So uh, I'm not sure if a bumper, I'm not planning on running a bumper on this thing, but I gotta, I think I gotta build something around that little fuel tank so that it's kind of got like a skid plate or whatever. So I gotta do that stuff, bare minimums, so that next year we can go racing. All right, so speaking of the no door handle thing, um, there's also no, door handle back here. Well, it's not really a door handle, but there was a, these things had a lift gate latch, a little T-handle right here, and that's how you would open that. Now well, that's gone. So I'm not sure how Gordy was planning on doing it, and I don't have anything mocked up yet. So for now, when I want to open it, I got to crawl through here, and it's not a whole lot of fun. Actually, I usually send my kid to do it. He's bigger than I am now, though, so I used to have him do it when he was little. I don't even know if I can do it anymore. Got a fire extinguisher in my way. Maybe it's easier if I take the seats out, probably. Either gotta get the fire extinguisher out of the way or the seat out of the way. Squeeze through. How's that awesome camera work? You wanted to see the floor there, right? All right, so. Now, hopefully it'll open so we can get back out of here. Hold on. Got a little latch here. One way or the other, it has to go. There we go. So usually what I do is I just, this door is heavy as heck too. If I'm going to be in and out of here, I have a little rag or something sitting in the corner here so that uh, it won't latch. Hold on. All right, 
So this lift gate is what makes this thing a sedan delivery. Um, obviously the no windows and stuff, but there actually are some that have windows. And the wagons have a tailgate that drops down and then a gate that lifts up. So to tell if it's a real sedan delivery, it's gotta have this one piece lift gate. Now you know. All right, so I got this bad boy in here. And we got an aluminum panel. Give me a second to grab a couple tools and we'll take that off of there. Got this guy Zeus in place. Actually need to add a couple more on the camera because it kind of vibrates and makes noise. That's why I got that blanket sitting on it. All right, and with that out of the way, ooh, dusty under here. You can see the nine inch, the mini tubs, the coilovers. It's got the dry shaft loop under there, ladder bars. So she's set up to go in a straight line. Um, I'm not sure how fast it'll go. I mean, it's heavy as a house, obviously, so it's not gonna be super fast, but you know, just the little bit of getting on it I do out on the streets, it's, it's enough to keep a guy on his toes anyways. So it'll be fun. Guess I might as well get the old uh, battery charger going since uh, when it quit running on me out there, I tried to start it a couple times in the battery was weak. So I got these uh, battery charging lugs on the bumper. That's where the uh, license plate slides used to be. That way I don't have to tear into my battery box or and open the gate and all that stuff. So I'm gonna charge it. It used to sit a lot lower in the front um, a good couple inches lower in the front. And I think it looked a little, I don't know, a little tougher maybe. Uh, the headers were dragging and getting bashed to crap. So I put the, the coil springs that, that were in there were cut severely. They were quite a, I don't know, a couple coils were cut off at least. So I put my stock springs out of the 55 in there and it raised it up probably more than I like. I'm kind of getting used to it, but I would like to see it sit just a little lower in the front and give it it had quite a bit of rake before and I guess I just got used to it and uh yeah it doesn't look bad like this but I might go back in there and cut a coil we'll see I got some if you look back I got some videos I got a video of when I actually replaced the coil springs and it, you'll see kind of how it sat before compared to now you can let me know what you think uh, a lot of people say they like it like this and I don't dislike it I'm just so used to it being so much lower but it is nice not to bash my headers on the gravel every time I drive out of the driveway. I'm not planning on running a bumper. I do want to get a grill and then the grill bar. I have a hood. Probably buried in all this stuff. Must be. It's behind all that metal. And obviously it's got a hole cut in it for the uh, stacks. Uh, I've posted some pictures before with it with the hood. I kind of like it with the hood. So I don't know. I'll... Uh, for now, I just run it without the hood because it gets so dang hot. I, and, you know, I don't have the bumper and all that stuff. But eventually, when I get all that stuff, I may, you know, try to run it with the hood. I should have cleaned this up a little better before I did my little video here. I hate seeing it kind of dirty like this. But, like, you know, this crud on the valve covers and, like, on this guy. What that is is... Last time, last few times I drove it, it gets a little hot and it starts spewing this antifreeze out of there. And then that's what all that kind of crap is from. So I need to get that cleaned off. Like I said, I need to fix this radiator and then get that figured out. But then the other thing is these stacks, the uh, ram tubes, I guess they're called. They got some like, almost looks like water spots or something on them. And that's because I screwed up and sprayed. I was trying to, I was going to a car show a couple summers ago and I had to work late and I was kind of in a hurry or whatnot and I wanted to get it cleaned up a little bit before I got it on the trailer and I sprayed some stuff I just had on the shelf over there. In fact, this is probably what it is. Super clean, dissolves grease fast. Anyways, I'm pretty sure I've used that Castrol Super Clean on my engines before. Uh, and I guess I thought that's what this was, but this isn't Castrol Super Clean. It's some other purple Super Clean that tries to make you think it's that stuff. And maybe you're not supposed to spray that stuff on aluminum either, but that stuff, don't spray it on aluminum because 
that's what happens. I took all those off there and I sanded them and I polished them and they look great for a little bit and then it just kind of comes back. So I'll either have to deal with it or I'll probably get some new ram tubes because I mean, let's be honest, that's like the focal point of the whole car. Uh, but it screwed that up. It screwed this aluminum stuff up that Gordy made. That says special delivery homegrown one and a Chevy and you can't hardly see it anymore because that acid etched it up. So be careful what you spray on your stuff, people. A little more about the mechanical injection. So because the fuel pump is right here and it runs off the engine, you know, the crank, when you go to start it, there's no fuel there. So what a lot of people, or what you try to do, and what I should have, is you should have your fuel tank higher than your fuel pump. Your, my fuel tank was up here, gravity feeding the fuel pump, then, you know, I think I could just turn the engine over a little bit, it would start pumping enough fuel to, to let the engine fire. But mine don't work like that, so, because my tank is way down here, so it won't suck, you know, the fuel out of there. So I've had two different ways of doing this over the years. When I first started, I used this turkey baster that I stole from my wife. She's probably still looking for it. You know, I'd grab a little fuel out of there, and then I'd put a little fuel in each cylinder, and then I'd go inside and fire it up. And that was pretty much a hit and miss because you never knew how much fuel you were giving it. But I was kind of starting to get it down. But now I've added this little tank right here. So that's got gas in it. And then it's plumbed to this little tiny pump right here. So that's my priming pump. Uh, it's electric, obviously, so I got a switch in there. It turns that on, then it sends fuel through this line into this little spot here, and it's got a check valve in it. Um, yeah, in, in this little spot right here, there's a check valve, so once yeah, it won't let fuel come back this way, it only lets it go this way. So the fuel goes in, goes down to the uh, Dang it, why do I keep the metering block? And then, so that's how you start it. That's how I start it now anyways. I got I let the electric fuel pump run for, you know, 10 or 15 seconds. And then, boom, you got gas in there and then you shut that off. But before I'd have either me or my son out here with the turkey baster squirting gas in it. So I remember at the car show we went to, um, my son was like 11 or 12. And I was, at that point, I didn't let him do the turkey baster. So I was out here squirting gas in and he was in there turning, you know, hitting switches. And I remember people saying, oh my God, that guy's letting his little kid start his car. Uh, but I had to have somebody do it. Uh, how do you like my custom overflow bottle? That was temporarily, permanently put there about two or three summers ago when we went uh, to a car show and then they had airport drags and I had to have an overflow bottle. And uh, yeah, so what do you think, permanent? As far as body work, like I said, it's got the, uh, those rear panels are stretched. The rear wheel openings are stretched. We got a little rust on each fender. That one's not too bad. I'm hoping I can just patch that one. This one over here, a little more significant. So I, I went ahead and bought one of these little panels that replaced that with. So I'll do that one of these days. Like I said, maybe, maybe someday I'll do the white patina kind of look and Maybe not. I'm just, I've, I've been looking at it like this for so long that, uh, I don't know, I kind of like it like that. What do you guys think? Uh, I know it's not, it's not for everybody. Most people would want to paint it. Nothing wrong with that, but I'll probably just never get to that. If I do, it'll be kind of something I can do myself uh, and kind of rough and tough looking. So there you have it. That's it for the uh, overview or walk around of the 57 Chevy sedan delivery. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you liked the car. So there you have it. That's it for the uh, overview or walk around of the 57 Chevy sedan delivery. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you liked the car. Uh, this car, to me, it is super cool. It just looks mean and tough. And uh, yeah, I know it's not for everybody. The younger, younger kids think I'm driving a hearse. Uh, only... When I take it out, pretty much I get thumbs up from everybody over 40-ish and everybody younger doesn't even look at it. But that's fine. I'm in that over 40-ish group, so I think it's cool. I uh, hope you guys like it. Uh, let me know if you got any questions about anything I didn't cover with it. Um, set immediate plans. 
or to try to get that list going so I can drag race it next summer. Next summer here on the channel, we'll be drag racing the 57 sedan delivery. Come, come back and find out. I'm going to do it this year. Um, so that's it for now, I guess. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Let me know if you got any questions about the car or if you want to, if you know anything about the mechanical injection and you can offer any advice on how, how to make that work or how those math formulas work, that would be helpful. Uh, otherwise, I'll figure it out eventually and uh, we'll get this thing on the track. Uh, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you next time.